like I said, I go, I went everywhere looking for help, and until you came along, there was nobody. But yeah. You came right when we needed it the most. If my wife told me she was going to divorce me, it wouldn't matter. If my kids said they hated me and went to disown me, it wouldn't have mattered. Because when you're in that act of addiction, it's just, there's nothing else that matters. And I think people in society don't get that. They think that it's more of a choice that people are making. Right before high school, I was like eighth grade, everybody started experimenting with drinking and you know uh, marijuana. So that's kind of how I got started. I do remember when he was 14 years old and I was dropping off at his friend's house. It was the first time he mentioned pressure and um, marijuana. And that's what, um, when it all started, when he was around 13, 14. By the time I was graduated from high school, there wasn't a drug I hadn't tried. And I was in denial a lot, so whatever he would tell me when I would ask questions about how he, when he was acting differently, you know, I'd always accept his answer. And I probably knew inside that it was not the truth. But I wanted to believe the good and not the bad. That one time taking something, you'll feel, you could feel that feeling and say, I want to feel that for the rest of my life. It's that powerful. And I don't think a lot of people understand that, that how powerful it is. It's not a drug to experiment with. It's truly not. It, it, it was this progression over time because once I knew I liked it and then the doctor prescribed it, I didn't take it as prescribed. You know, I wasn't taking it one every six hours or 12 hours. I was taking multiples every hour and then snorting them. And you know, it kept progressing and kept progressing. So, and then the, during that time, everybody was being prescribed pills. It was everywhere. So then once that left, you don't have pills anymore. The only other choice, especially in Baltimore, is heroin. After we had our son and son, I felt like I kind of noticed some things were like, okay, what's going on? Like, you know, money kind of started like disappearing and just like weird little things. Like, and I'm just like, you know, like I say something, I get, he kind of had like a weird response and it just like, it, it was like, what's going on here? The way I was raised, my, my morals all went out the window. Like the only thing that mattered was that drug. It didn't matter anything else. It had something to do with me getting that drug or me allowing to get that drug. I didn't want anything to do with you. We had already gone through one time of trying to get Todd clean. Todd refused to go away. He didn't want anyone to know that he was using. How do I tell everybody, you know, these people that I that I work for, the people that work under me, like I'm in a position where I'm a manager, so at my job as a chef, so like how do I tell these people underneath me that I'm a, I'm essentially a junkie? Up to a year and a half ago, he was really doing bad. And um, I was kind of to the point where I was actually like ready to leave him. His wife gave him an ultimatum that, you know, do it or you're not gonna see your kids again. Well, anyway, in the meantime, she's telling me she's been following Brandon. I've known Todd for a long time. Todd and I uh, grew up together. We went to high school together, we hung out together, and ultimately we partied together. You know, we, we, we ran in a lot of the same circles and it's not, it's, it's not ironic or anything special as to why our paths crossed later on down the, the road, <laughs> you know. I was just at the end of my road. I couldn't do it anymore. The, the sickness, the, the money, everything. I had two kids that were getting older. So it was just, it was time. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired is what we say in a lot. Brandon talked to Todd and told him what he could do to help him and literally came to Baltimore the next day and they were on a flight to Florida to get Todd into recovery. And it literally was like, it gives me goosebumps because it, he literally like did come in and like saved our family. And I just thought the whole time when he comes back, he's probably gonna want at least still smoke pot or he's gonna want at least do this. He's, you know, drink a beer. He, he's not gonna not do anything. I mean, I couldn't imagine. I've only known him doing something for 20 some years. I couldn't imagine him not doing anything. And he did nothing. He literally did the program. In the time period that he stayed at Banyan, when he got off that airplane, he was a different person. He had lost like 30 pounds and he was just so healthy and just, just it was a different person. Sobriety is always number one in my life. I, I always put that before everything else. Like that's what I've been taught. Like even before my wife, my kids, it has to be number one to me. Even through the times we're going through right now with COVID, I mean, my job has been very tough. 
but it's always stays my number one thing. And it's a shame that meetings aren't happening because that's a big thing for me and the fellowship. But my life is great. You know, I'm, I'm in the process of buying a new house. Um, my job is going great. It's been better than ever. My kids are doing wonderful. My wife's doing wonderful. My family's doing great. It's just, and it's all because I'm present. Picking him up in the airport was just like, his, the look of him, like he actually looked me in the eyes and that wasn't something that I realized that he didn't do until he was back. Like he hadn't like even like made, I hardly made eye contact with me. And you know, because he was so ashamed of who he was and what he was doing to our family. But, um, but since he's been back, it's like we've had, we have a good family life. Um, you know, we spend time together. Like, you know, I feel like I actually have a husband. I have like my friend back. I wasn't like involved in like the minute details of my kids' lives and my wife's life. And, and now I am, you know, like I, I, my son is one of my best friends, like, and that's how I want it to be. And I speak freely about my addiction with him because I feel like it's a genetic disease and he could walk down that road very easily one day. I'm here for him. And that there's nothing he hasn't done that I haven't. And there's not a mistake that he's gonna make that I haven't. I'm not afraid to answer the phone anymore or uh, go to sleep at night because for, 24 years, I really probably didn't get much sleep. It's, it's, it's no crazy wonder to understand that as soon as Todd started getting better, his family started getting better. His marriage started getting better. His relationship between his, his, his son started getting better. You have to have it in your, your mind, in your heart, that you want to stop. Because I feel like if you're pushed into it or you're, you're not willing to want to stop, you're not going to. I mean, you could go through a 30-day program, a 90-day program, staying sober, living, all that. Once you get out on your own, you have to have made that decision that you're done. Because you're going to be faced with things where you're going to like think about it. Because it happens all the time. You're going to have dreams about it. You're going to have those times where you're stressed out and you're going to want to you know, escape. But you have to have that foundation. You know, like you gotta build it. It's not gonna just happen out of nowhere. What I would say is reach out to Brandon Novak. I mean, he's on Instagram there. He gives out his cell phone number. He will help you. I mean, Banyan Treatment Center is the one place that I know is a success story. They do help. And because uh, I've reached out to other places, I've seen, I know people that have gone to other places, they've been to rehabs over and over and over again. None of these places have helped but Banyan Treatment Center was the success story for Brandon as well as Todd. So they, they, are, they are a success story in my book. Love you, I'm very proud of you. We look forward to our future in our new house. Excited.